Season 2 of Ghost in the Shell Sack 2045 was released a few weeks ago on Netflix, and the ending was a bit confusing, to say the least. Let me explain the ending, what I took from it anyway. And to talk about the ending, we have to first look at the previous episode, episode 11, Doomsday slash The Moon Over the Ruined Castle. In episode 11, Section 9 has caught up with the post-humans who are threatening the world, Togusa is on the submarine with Mizukane, while the rest of the team had been going after Takashi, Major Matoka Kusanagi leaves Purin to Bato and takes on Takashi and actually takes him down. As he falls, N, or Net, feels that Big Brother has been gunned down. All of N push the launch button that shows up in the palms of their hands to activate the nuclear warheads. The seemingly undying Muzukane hits the launch button and fires those nukes. All seems lost. Purin kills Bato, deciding to side with AI instead of someone she cared greatly for when she was a human. The Major falls to the ground as her failure should mean the end of the world as we know it. Was destroying the world your plan all along, she asks? The episode fades out with Tachikoma viewing the scene. Then, the final episode of Season 2 happens. Double think slash event boundary? Everything seems to have worked out. Fade to black. No, just kidding. Something feels off to the Major. Patrick Huge died of suicide? Bato is alive? They receive a medal and bonuses for saving the world? Then it all happens again. Hearing that Takashi made it home just fine to his mother is what sets the Major off into thinking she's in some sort of brain maze. Purin killed in action. John Smith, cryogenically frozen. Off to John Smith! This is a very important scene for explaining what is going on exactly. The Major has Smith released, and Smith goes through quite a bit of emotions to say the least. Asking the year and finding out it's still 2045, he proclaims that it can only mean that they managed to cover up 1A84's existence after he was frozen. Or possibly there was a war against the posthumans and we lost. Followed by asking the on-site agent if he's N. When he removed the plug from the back of his neck, which was cutting off his access to the net, he goes online and can finally see the Major. He freaks out and falls, then strangely changes sort of back to the way he used to be. I believe this is showing us that once he connected to the net, he gets hacked and becomes N. The Major realizes it's not a brain maze because she can only be seen by those who are connected. That's the real world, but she's not physically there. The Major deactivates autistic mode, no outside communications or network access to or from her cyber brain, and what do we know? She wakes up, coming out of a pod. Now in an eerie theater that reminds me a hell of a lot like Nia waking up in the real world, the Major encounters Purin Asaki. The rest of the episode is indeed an info dump, but let's decipher it. At least we'll try to. Purin explains that the smart gas attack did in fact happen, but the nuclear attack sounds like it didn't, although some people may have memories of it happening and others having a memory of it being averted. A few hours before the smart gas attack, most of the people who were in Shin Tokyo were brought to this theater and plugged in like the Major was. These N people are able to live in a separate reality that is free from conflict while they go about their lives in the real world. Purin explains further that it's as if every person is playing their own game that's been tailor-made specifically for them. They're living out their lives in the real world while also existing in a state where they're free of worldly concerns. The Major speaks out our feelings. That makes no sense at all. No. No, it doesn't. Purin shows us construction workers building Shin Tokyo, and if I'm getting this correctly, some people are plugged into pods, basically living in a paradise version of the Matrix. Some have their cyber brains affected by N and are rebuilding Shin Tokyo, and also simultaneously experiencing their most tranquil mental being within their own cyber brains. This condition Takashi coined as doublethink. Now the Major asked for confirmation with Purin if everything that happened after the smart gas was a fantasy world. But, and this is important, Purin claims that strangely, many people had been experiencing doublethink even before the smart gas attack, starting right after Togusa went missing, the nostalgia virus. This is important, so I'll circle back around to this shortly. First, the Major speaks with Takashi, who is finishing up making people worldwide into doublethink. Takashi speaks to the Major, and depending on the dub or sub, he says slightly different things depending on which you're watching. And if you're actually watching the dub, which I did the second time around, but it gets real weird because he's saying one thing and subtitles show whether or not you have them turned on, showing a slightly different message. But essentially, he says that he did what he had to do to buy people time who were on the verge of turning into N. He needed to make it appear as if he was defeated by the American Empire so that the AE networks could go online and allow Takashi to inflict N across the entire world. Doing this would allow Takashi to elevate humanity to achieve the technological singularity. A hypothetical point in time at which technological growth becomes uncontrollable and irreversible, resulting in the unforeseeable changes to human civilization, 
i.e. human evolution. With Takashi's plan, humans can now live plugged into a world without knowing they have undergone an evolution at all. But this also means that humanity has been defeated by the post-humans. To me, this is free will being taken away from people. Purin makes her case to the Major for allowing Takashi's plan to succeed, as it would mean humanity's chance to move to their next stage of evolution. The Major asks Takashi why Purin and herself were not infected by Doublethink. The Major, she's a rare breed of romantic. For her, there is little difference between reality and dreams. Still not exactly sure what that means. But as for Asaki, it's an easy answer. She has no ghost, no soul. As this version of Purin Asaki is completely AI. Although this sort of puts down the overall question that Ghost in the Shell asks, do you need a soul or a ghost to be living? Purin didn't return to Section 9 because she betrayed Bato, a person she cared about greatly when she was alive, and risked everything for the plan of a fellow AI, going against humanity. But Purin cries and questions why she's doing so. She cries again when she's reintroduced to Section 9, presumably being convinced by the Major to play along and live out her life with them, even though she's an AI. It looks as if the Major is going to pull out the cables, and it fades to black. We're back, most likely with the Section 9 crew who are all deep in doublethink, as they didn't recognize Purin when she was introduced to them. The ending plays out with the Major looking over Shin Tokyo with Bato joining. She mentions the net is vast. I think the next time humanity advances and achieves a singularity, it'll probably leave this world behind and spread far and wide among the stars. She's leaving again. The next time they meet her and Bato, they may not recognize each other. To be safe, use a password code, 1A84 or 1984. Don't ever forget that we existed here and now and in this time, and the major jumps. Now I think this ending is pretty ambiguous and leaves a lot to the viewer, as it raises more questions than answers them. First off, we see a completed Shin Tokyo. Is this the real world? Is this years later after the city was built that the major finally decides to leave? Is she leaving because she can't be around people living in a false reality? If so, why didn't she just pull the plug? Have humans really advanced to a singularity if they're simply plugged into a fantasy world? Where exactly is she going? The most mind-bending question I picked up on, and only while I was working on this video, circling back around to when Purin mentioned that people were experiencing Doublethink before even the smart gas hit. Does the entirety of Season 2 take place in Doublethink itself? Were we, the viewers, deceived? Is it not what truly happened? Nothing from when Togusa disappeared due to the nostalgia virus may have been reality. This could help explain why posthumans could affect the world so significantly, why so many people could not see them, for example. As I mentioned in my Don't Sleep On video, I think the series is pretty damn good, despite the 3D animation. But my cyber brain is starting to overload a bit thinking about this ending, so let me know what you think about it in the comments. And until next time, see ya.